Hello and welcome in. Mark here, aka the Markster. This is video number 46 in the Freak Ad series. Today we're going to be looking at the utility in the Port Design Workbench that you can use to create a draft on your model. Let's switch to Port Design here. This is the tool. Make a draft on a face. Before we get to that, let me show you which version of FreeCAD I have installed. This is 0 0.19, revision number 20036 on Windows 10. This is a development release. This is currently in development. This one's hot off the presses. There was a change that was made yesterday that has been incorporated into this into this bill you see 313 I'm recording this on 314 one of the changes that was made if we go to the uh, spreadsheet workbench let me just show you this right quick In the past, if you created a spreadsheet, it just appeared in the tree, but now it, it opens it for editing. Just like you had clicked on it. So that's one change. Let's save you a click. Normally when you create a spreadsheet, you want to go ahead and start working on it. So that's one change. Another change is we've added this alias control alias line edit control and it enables you to modify your alias from right here on the screen rather than needing to uh, right click choose your properties and so on so let's let's just do an example here maybe we'll have three um, parameters, length, width, and height for a given model. And maybe we'll make them 10 and let's say 15 for the length and width. Now if we want to create an alias, the traditional way is to right click, choose properties, click the alias tab, and enter in your alias. And that works fine, but you know, it's a lot of extra clicks. So now you'll be able to just go right here and, and enter your alias and press enter. You must press enter in this box, either in this one or in this one, to have it update. So if we put like 20 for the height and click here and make that height and then just click over here but it didn't update it and neither did it update the contents so this is not a different this is not really a change because you always had to hit enter up here so let's put the height in here and then we can click over to this and put 20 press enter and now both of them are updated and we can modify the yeah, alias height of the box let's say press enter and now it's been updated if you try to add an invalid alias name for example height of the box with spaces that's illegal press enter you get an error, unable to set alias. And if you go back, you see that it it retained the, the one that it had before. So uh, the rules on aliases, they need to be <clears throat> beginning with a letter, no spaces, only underscores and letters and numbers.
but you cannot begin with an underscore. I think you can begin with a number. Let's try it. No, you cannot begin with a number either. So you cannot begin with a number. You cannot begin with an underscore, but it can it can contain. Let's enter. It can contain underscores and numbers. You just cannot begin with one. You must begin with a letter. I recommend um, these English language letters. All right. Well, that's that's enough for this. Let's get over to for design now and start looking at the draft tool that this video is supposed to be about. <clears throat> so what is a draft? And why would you want one? Let's add a cone. I think a cone will illustrate this. So if we were making a pattern for use in foundry work and we were trying to make this cone. So boundary work is creating a casting. Uh, in a nutshell, you would have some sand. You would push this, put this item in your in your contraption that holds the sand. Pour in the sand, pack it around it, and at some point remove this from the sand and the sand will hopefully remain intact and not all fall apart or fall back in. If it does, you just have to do it again. But this object here would be something you could remove fairly easily, relatively speaking, because it's smaller at the bottom than it is at the top. If the opposite were true, Let's make it five at the top. Well, there's just no way you're going to be able to remove this in this orientation, at least, without disrupting the sand as you're pulling it out. Let me delete that cone. And let's put in a cylinder. OK, so here's a straight cylinder with the radius equal on both edge, both faces, top and bottom. You could remove this theoretically without disrupting the sand, but it's going to be a problem. So what people usually do is add a draft. They'll make that bottom just ever so slightly smaller so that you can facilitate removing this object. So let's, let's do that. We click the face that we want to modify. We'll select the uh, make a draft on a face. And you see the default is one and a half degrees. And you can set that to whatever you want. If you want a little bit less, you could make it a little bit less. You want a little bit more, a little bit more. I don't know exactly what most of these um, foundry workers use. <clears throat> I don't have any experience with that at all. But half a degree, half a degree might not be enough. I'm not sure. So now we'll look at this from the front. It's hard to see, but there is a very slight. draft here. Let's look at it from the top here. You see this dark ring around it. That's the you can see that the bottom is just a little bit bigger, which is not what we want. We want the opposite. This is gonna make it even harder. So we can click on draft and choose reverse equals true. And now we have at bottom a little bit smaller and it's, it's such a small amount that the finished product 
it won't be that noticeable that there you you probably wouldn't even notice that there was ever a draft applied so there's that balance between enough of a draft that you can remove it and you're saying it's not all falling back in or, or tearing apart but small enough that it's not going to be all that noticeable or that's going to ruin the product and make it unusable as a, for its intended purpose. Typically there will still be some machining left to do on these objects anyway so maybe you uh, maybe you could machine it on a lathe to remove this and make it all the same size once you have your your basic object made so what if let me show you the difference let's make it a bigger I'll make it five degrees just to be a little more noticeable here on the screen so let me show you the original cylinder now it's going to hide the draft and show the cylinder let's go back and forth so you see that the top is remaining the same and the bottom is changing to accommodate the draft so the top is remaining the same this might not be what you want you might prefer the bottom to remain the same and to apply the draft to the top part maybe the bottom is the critical dimension for what you're making so let's double click on the draft and if we select neutral plane and select the bottom face now the top will be the one that changes and not the bottom you see that the top is getting bigger to accommodate this draft so that's what the neutral plane is for this is not a tool that I've used much I'll be honest with you this pull direction is a little bit of a mystery uh, I, I do know this much the pull direction must be an edge and you must have a neutral plane um, defined if you don't have a neutral plane defined then the pull direction is not going to work and it's it's finicky let's put it that way and it would need to be a straight edge that you select if we go to you say okay if we go to the start page and click on help click on part design and come down here and look for draft click on it and this is the instructions the documentation so the neutral plane the plane that must not change dimensionally pull direction then select an edge pull direction is only effective if the neutral plane has been set the results can be unpredictable and that's an understatement <coughs> also it will only function on faces that are normal to each other if there are any tangential faces attached it will fail a common cause would be a face that already has fillets or chamfers applied in this case you could remove the fillet or chamfer do do the uh, draft and then come back and add your fillets back in it's general, generally recommended to do the fillets and chamfers last in your model because these are some finicky operations that often fail so if you do them early in your model and later on some subsequent change causes them to fail then it's problematic to have to go back up the model tree 
redo these <clears throat> and it might mess up everything else that followed. And since they're pretty easy to do them, you, you're just selecting the edges and applying the fillets and chamfers. So it's not a big deal if you have to redo them compared to all the other steps that you might have to redo. But the other school of thought on this is do the chamfers and fillets early since they're finicky and it seems to be more robust against breaking when applying additional features to your object. So which way is better I'm not really sure. My practice has always been save them till last but you can try both ways and <clears throat> see which works for you. Anyway that's the documentation on the pull direction. Let's um, delete this draft, delete this cylinder, and bring in a cube to show another example. And add it to box. Let's add a cylinder also. All right, so let's suppose this is our model, our pattern that we want to put in the casting, put in the uh, sand. And let's see if we can apply the draft to these faces. Let's make the top the neutral plane. And since it's backwards, can you see that? I think you can. Of course, we could put this in upside down. And now we have a, a one and a half degree draft on our pattern and we should be able to hopefully remove that you can see the little extra darkness around the edge let's look at it from the bottom ah here we are now you can see it you couldn't see it from the other side I was fooling myself and that's the the effect that the, uh, the top face is a little bit bigger than the bottom. Alright, well that's going to do it for today. And you know a little bit more about the draft utility. There are other, other reasons, not just for foundry work. If you wanted to make this object in this shape, you could use this tool for that purpose. If that's the shape you wanted. If you want to apply a taper, um, so it could be used not just for for foundry work, but for making your object. And I'll I'll probably make another video on this, <clears throat> making some dovetails, which can be challenging because you have a compound angle on those. So that could be coming up in a future video. I haven't decided yet. But I know that the, uh, the draft tool is something that can help you make your dovetail joints or dovetails. All right, well, that's going to be it for today. I thank you for watching. And as always, have a great day.